Welcome to the Cathedral of St. Matthew the Apostle. Today we celebrate Mary, Mother of God. We ask that you please continue to use your mask to cover your mouth and your nose for the entire Mass, except when consuming the communion host. We encourage you to join in the spoken and sung responses and hymns for the Mass. Today's music leaflet can be found on the homepage of the Cathedral website, which you can access on your phone or mobile device. You can also use QR codes posted at the entrances to the cathedral to download the leaflet, or you can pick up a printed program at the entrances. We ask that you return them after mass. Holy communion will be distributed from the center aisles of each major section of pews, as we did prior to the pandemic. We continue to ask that you consider taking Eucharist in the hand only, not on the tongue, and please use the hand sanitizer station as you approach the year. Leading us in our celebration today is Monsignor Jameson, rector of the cathedral. Let us rise as we begin this liturgy of the Eucharist. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, and a happy new year to all of you who are here this morning, and also those who are with us by way of live streaming. It's a great day, a great day to celebrate, because today it's still within that Christmas season, that Christmas time, and so today, as we'll hear, especially in the gospel, we'll hear something about the shepherds. 
and we'll hear something about Mary. So today combines the two, the idea of the Christmas season with the importance of Mary, the role she had in this great event. And so then, my brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Receive 
Let us pray. O God, who through the fruitful virginity of Blessed Mary bestowed on the human race the grace of eternal salvation, grant, we pray, that we may experience the intercession of her through whom we were found worthy to receive the author of life, our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Numbers. The Lord said to Moses, speak to Aaron and his sons and tell them, this is how you shall bless the Israelites. Say to them, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you kindly and give you peace. So shall they invoke my name upon the Israelites and I will bless them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to ransom those under the law, so that we may receive adoption as sons. As proof that you are sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then also an heir through God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. with you. And with your with spirit. Your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. The shepherds went in haste to Bethlehem and found Mary and Joseph and the infant lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known the message that had been told to them about this child. All who heard it were amazed by what was told them by the shepherds. And Mary kept all these things, reflecting on them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all that they had seen and heard, just as they had been told. When eight days were completed for his circumcision, he was named Jesus, the name given him by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We get to look at Christmas today through two sets of eyes. The eyes of the shepherds, who were the newborn Christ's first visitors, and the eyes of his mother, Mary. Now, sometimes the shepherds get short shrift in the telling of the Christmas story. They pale by comparison with the Magi, 
those mysterious figures from out of the East laden with exotic gifts. The only gifts the shepherds bring are the simple gifts of awe and wonder, the homage of their hearts. But wouldn't we do well to follow their lead and bring those same gifts to the newborn Savior? Gold, frankincense, and myrrh might be precious, but wonder, awe, and adoration are priceless. And what did they see, these shepherds? They saw Mary and Joseph, people very much like themselves, humble people, poor people, unimportant people with neither power nor influence. But they saw more, of course. They saw the glow of divinity in the infant lying in the manger. Why else would they have felt compelled after they had left the scene to go about making known what they had heard and seen? What else would they have returned to the task of tending their flocks, glorifying and praising God? We would do well to look at the manger scene through the eyes of the shepherds. But in order to see what they saw, I think we first need to shed some of our self-importance and allow ourselves to become small and insignificant like they were, simple and poor in spirit. For only the eyes of the poor in spirit can see divinity hiding in such humble humanity. And my friends, the second set of eyes through which we get to look at the great Christmas mystery are the eyes of Mary, the mother of Jesus and our mother. It is Mary who kept all these things, pondering them in her heart. Mary must have pondered them in her heart for as long as she lived. And as the child grew in wisdom, age, and grace, and when he came to embrace his holy mission and to pay the price for doing so, her pondering must have turned into puzzlement and into pain. How wise the church is to hold Mary before us today. She has so much to tell us about her son. She who bore him in her womb with love beyond all telling. She who gave birth to the author of life amid the squalor of a stable. She who welcomed scruffy shepherds as his first visitors. She who looked upon the child knowing that he was not only her son, but also God, God's son, in a way no other child would ever be. She who would one day stand at the foot of the cross and receive his broken body into her arms, the same arms that cradled his tiny, newborn body. It is no wonder Luke tells us that Mary kept all these things, pondering them in her heart. There was enough here to ponder for a whole lifetime. And you know, it's the same for you and for me. However long we live, 
we will never run out of things to ponder about the Christmas story, the Christ story. Never run out of things to learn about God, about ourselves, about what is important and what is not, about life, about love. My friends, it is altogether fitting that we begin this new year by reflecting and pondering along with Mary, the mother of God, and our mother, as she believed. With Mary as our companion, with Mary as our guide, 2022 could be a great year hopefully a year without Omicron. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, and spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. As sons and daughters of our Father in heaven, and through the intercession of Mary, the mother of God and first disciple, we confidently place our prayers before the Lord. Father Pope Francis, our Cardinal Archbishop Gregory, his assistant bishops, and all co-workers in the vineyard, that they may continue to witness to the truth and imitate Mary's willingness to bear Christ to the ends of the world. Let us pray to the Lord. For peace.
peace throughout the world, for success in the efforts leading towards global nuclear disarmament, and for all those who work to reconcile nations and regions at war. Let us pray to the Lord. For mothers throughout the world, especially those in distress, and for all those who support them in times of trouble and challenge. Let us pray to the Lord. For our nation, as it faces challenges to trust and honesty, and for a renewed sense of purpose marked by humble service and the promotion of the common good. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who are suffering in any way, particularly as a result of this pandemic, for all who come to their assistance as a mother comforts her children. Let us pray to the Lord. For all those who have died, especially as a result of this pandemic, that they may join Mary and all the saints and angels in praising God forever in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, hear our prayers and graciously bless our family of faith. May Mary's example be our guide and compass throughout the new year. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please remember that the mission of our cathedral parish depends on your generosity. We thank those who already give through Faith Direct or PayPal or your weekly envelopes, and we invite others to contribute now as we pass the basket, and also the QR code can be found at the entrance to the cathedral as well. And we sincerely appreciate your support. Please join in our offertory hymn, number 446, Gentle Mary Laid Her Child. Gentle Mary laid her 
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord, the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the fault of the Holy Church. O God, who in your kindness begin all good things and bring them to fulfillment, Grant to us who find joy in the solemnity of the Holy Mother of God, that just as we glory in the beginnings of your grace, so one day we may rejoice in its completion. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, and to praise, bless, and glorify your name on the solemnity of the motherhood of the blessed ever-Virgin Mary. For by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, she conceived your only begotten Son, and without losing the glory of virginity, brought forth into the world the eternal light, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exultation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Wilton, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Oh, God. 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord. I am not worthy to change the message of my name. Say the word. Lord. 